There are times when you join me in the voodoo garden and it's packed. It looks like a total jungle. It's beautiful in here. And then, well, <laughs> and then there's today where it looks really sparse and it looks like a garage sale going on in here. Really kind of sad in a way, but that's that's the nature of the voodoo garden. It's renewal. I've, I'm always changing things. Uh, most people are okay with that and they actually enjoy the ride. Different plants coming in, different plants going out and that way we keep it fresh and new and interesting. And some people, they like the old. They like things to stay the same. I'm of the group where uh, a little of both. There are some standards that I like to keep. Something like this, my Prince of Orange. It's a beauty. I got that. I got that as this little itty bitty thing from Walmart for just a few bucks and in no time, well actually a lot of time, it took, it's starting to grow and vine and going a little bit nuts. I got to make room for this thing. Now there are some plants that I just need to get rid of and some plants I just don't want anymore. So I'm, I'm getting rid of them and I'm emptying out the room so that I can remember I mentioned that I was going to paint the place and spruce it up a little bit and I'm going to be doing that. But the first thing that I need to do before I do all of that is to divest myself of some of the plants that have no future in the voodoo garden and also scale back some of the ones that do. That's why I have this mess going on here. I wanted to show you this because I don't know <laughs> why, why not <laughs> this one right here, for instance, and by the way, the, yeah, the chicks are gone. You don't hear the peeping in here. I think I mentioned that in the last episode, but, uh, one of the side effects of having the little baby chickens in here was they made a lot of chick dust. Remember I mentioned that chick dust on everything? Well, this is my English ivy. It's a different kind of English ivy. It's really light colored. I got this as an itty bitty plant at Walmart for a couple bucks. I transplanted it. I took care of it. It grew. And this is off of the compost tea that I keep talking about. Actually, I keep harping about. <laughs> the compost tea got this growing really, really well. It, it was doing fine. Now I noticed and it was going over to your left over here in the corner. Well, I noticed that what happened is when the chick dust started really piling on it, it started to slow down and it looked a little bit, I don't know, not too happy. And I think that's because of the clogged pores. Now, I could sit here for the rest of my life and wipe off all the leaves, one side, then the other side, or I could hose them down. I could hose them down. That's actually the best idea, but I do have a project going on outside. I'm making compost. Yes, I am making compost like I do every year. And my, my uh, change that's going to be happening in the voodoo garden is normally I use potting soil. I add a little bit of vermiculite and then I feed it with compost tea. That's what I've always done before. Now I'm going to change something. I've never done this before. I'm making compost outside, rich, dark, beautiful compost from the, uh, the stuff that I get out of the chicken coop. When that's done, I'm not going to dry it out and powderize it like I did the last compost. I'm going to bake it and make sure that all the insects are dead, but leave it in its whole form and not powderize it. I'm not going to dry it. I'm just going to sterilize it, bring it in, mix it with worm castings, and potting soil and vermiculite. What that's going to do is it's going to give me a whole different uh, type of soil. Whereas I feed it with compost tea, now it's actually going to have compost in the soil. So that's going to be a whole different dynamic for my garden. And I think what's going to happen, I, I, what I'm hoping and what I'm thinking is going to happen is that the plants are going to just burst out of their, out of their skins and grow like mad. And uh, so what I want to do is I want to get them prepared for that. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm preparing the room to make the changes in, uh, in the color and, and design and wash the rug and paint the floor and all that uh, not so fun stuff. But I'm also getting the plants ready for their new home in the new soil. So instead of cleaning this up, I really don't need this all over the place. What I'd like to do is to have it regrow itself and regrow itself in the new soil. What I'm going to do is I'm just merely going to cut it. I know this is painful. This is really painful to watch when you see a, a really beautiful, healthy, happy plant get butchered. But sometimes, and I've mentioned this before, and I've demonstrated this before with a coleus over my shoulder. Sometimes it's one of those things that are necessary in order to ensure uh, its future is going to be better than it is right now. So what I'm doing is I cut off all the vines. I could root these, but I don't need these. So these are going to go out into the compost pile. These will compost up nicely. Don't need those at all. Yeah, I know this is drastic, but I do this sort of thing and things do tend to get better. This 
right here. This was the spider plant, the, the little spider babies. Remember I, I did that thing with the, the purple passion? I showed you how I rooted it and stuff. It's doing really well. And so is the, the spider plants. They're actually filling this out nicely. I wish I would have got compost in there. Can you imagine a spider plant growing in that kind of compost? Well, this one's all ready to go. What I'm going to do is this will hold it. Oop, whoop, nope. Got that little collet going on over here. All right, you got to go. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to be a nice small plant. And when I get the compost done, it's not quite done yet, see? And this is going to stay small. Once I get the compost done and mix up the soil, I'm going to put this in a bigger pot. Yes, I'm not just going to change the soil. I'm going to change the size of the pot because I got a feeling this is going to be a little bit root bound and it's not going to go very far. So I'm going to leave this like that and being root bound and not getting a whole lot of care, it's going to stay small. Once I get the soil, I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to put it in the new soil. This one, this one was the African mask. I think it's called an African mask. This one right here was looking kind of crappy. And, uh, oh, actually, come on, come on. You know you want to see it up close. The African mask is a, is a beautiful plant. Uh, it, the video does it no justice at all. The three dimensions and the designs inside the leaf are absolutely stunning. And uh, it'll grow beautifully indoors. And it has grown beautifully indoors. I got this as a really tiny plant. It grew really nice. There was actually another one down here growing out of the soil. There were two of these that started as one little plant and then it forked and it, and it grew and I buried it a little bit deeper. Well, it did really good for a long time. And then what happened is it got tall. And some of these plants, when they get tall, they just kind of snake around. They don't go straight up like a tree. They kind of snake around. This one was falling over, doing strange things. And see, they even put out flowers. Yeah. They're very unremarkable flowers. They're really nothing to look at. So th they do that, and it's really all well and good, but they start looking a little bit, you know, not so fun anymore, and they, they lean over. You can prop them up with sticks, but I prefer not to do that. Uh, so what you can do is you can snip them off, root them. Yeah, this will root beautifully, and then you can plant it in soil and start all over again with the plant that's starting straight up. Now, since this was in potting soil, just regular potting soil, and it grew like that, it grew beautifully. What I'm thinking is that if I put it into the new soil, it'll grow even better. So what I did was I snipped one of these off. One of them's missing, and I'm gonna show you where it is. I normally take clippings and I put them right into the soil. Well, like I mentioned, I don't have the soil yet. So what I've been doing is I put this in a bucket of water, and, and you can do that with a lot of plants. You can just snip them off, put them in soil, and look, the roots will come out of the stem on this mask horse uh, African mask plant beautifully this has been two weeks two weeks it started with just little nubs and in two weeks it's gotten roots coming out so in another couple of weeks when the uh, compost is done this is going to have beautiful roots I'm going to plant it in the soil and my plan is it's going to grow a lot stronger and happier than the other plant now right next to it this one is a Diefenbachia also known as a dumb cane I did the exact same thing to it because it was getting a little spindly. It doesn't put out roots quite as fast, but it is putting out roots. See, the little nubs are turning into roots. Yep. And uh, I left the top on it, the growing tip. Now, normally when you take a plant and you're going to root it, you want to take off quite a bit of the leaves because it can't support those while it's forming the roots, like with tomato cuttings and stuff. See what happens? Some of these leaves, they die off. That's not a problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to snip these off and that'll get rid of all of the old dead leaves. The new stuff is looking fine. So there's no problem whatsoever with this. I can keep these in this water for quite some time and they'll stay fresh and they'll await their new soil. Over here at the site of the <laughs> decimation, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I cut it down, but from underneath the soil, one thing that Diefenbachia's dumb canes will do is they will, you know, a little spider or an ant in there, I don't know what that is. Something's moving around that soil. But what they do, will do is they'll put out little shoots. So this will be four new plants if I want. I don't need another Diefenbachia plant, so I'm not going to keep this. But that's usually what will happen when you cut your dumb canes down to the ground. They will start putting out shoots from underneath. Now, I wanted to show you this before I toss it. This is the bottom stem of what's in the water over there. Yeah, this was a very tall plant. Now, normally, you can take this stem, shove it into the soil halfway, 
and the bottom half will grow roots. The top half will put out shoots and grow new plants. See, like from right over at the top here, you'll see a new shoot. Yep, it'll put out multiples. Now, that's one way to do it, or you can lay it in and do it the trench method. Lay it into the soil, bury it until just a little line of the top is showing, okay? Bury it almost all the way in soil. Keep it slightly moist, and that's it. And within about a month or so, what'll happen is the bottom half that's in the, well, the part that's in the soil will grow roots, and those will grow down. And what'll happen is on the top, you'll have multiple plants uh, from one to six to even more growing up from that plant. And also you can cut this in half and you can plant two different ones. Dievenbachia's dumb canes are wonderful for doing that. Also dragon trees. Dirt. Dirt all over the place. Now one thing I want to mention, one last thing I want to mention about this is when you have uh, your plants in water and they're forming roots, one thing I want to stress is that you want to change that water probably once a week at least. No more, uh, no less than once a week. Take the water, take these plants out, rinse them off, throw the water out, wipe out the container, add more water. Now you can get away with not doing that, but the water will start getting really stagnant. Bacteria can start growing in there. And also a slime will start growing on your plants. And that's not a healthy thing. You wanna make sure that you keep them clean and healthy while they grow the roots. You'll thank yourself later. Okay, that takes care of that. And uh, also this one right here, is a plant that's just going to get snipped out and tossed out. I'm only keeping one of these. I don't need them. See, what I'm doing is I'm scaling back the voodoo garden just a little bit to where I only have one little plant of this the way I first started out and one little plant of this the way I first started out. I'm scaling back all the plants to make them smaller and um, I think it's a, uh, maybe in a week, two weeks or something like that. We're making a pilgrimage over to Des Moines and they have Lowe's, Home Depot and a larger Walmart over there with a garden section. And what I want to do is I want to take a look at their plants because our local stores don't have little itty bitty tropical plants. They don't. And I thought that's kind of weird. It's summertime. Why not have tropical plants out and sell them to people? People like me. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I would like to have those. I like growing a garden outside, but I also like to have tropical plants growing in my, in my home. And they don't have any around here. So I'm going to have to go to Des Moines. And uh, it's kind of a field trip for us, you know. Uh, we, take a, we make it a whole day event take the dogs out, take them out for a walk and stuff. We have to do it on a cool day because you can't leave the dogs in a hot car. So we have to plan it. Now, one thing that I'm keeping, that's this. This is a uh, Buddha belly. I've shown it for many, 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 many episodes. And I grew it from a seed sent by one of you. Now it grew really nice and it was putting out leaves and it was putting out flowers. You saw that. Now what happened was it stopped growing. All the leaves fell off. It had one flower stalk that looked like it really didn't want to be here anymore. It was looking crappy. And I had no idea what was going on. I was thinking, well, maybe it's going dormant or something. And I think that's what happened. So what I did was I let it stay dormant. I didn't water it as much. Some plants will go dormant. You want to water them a little bit less than you normally do because you don't want to flood them out trying to force them to come back. Some of them need to go into a dormant stage and then they build up energy and then they come right back again. That's what happened, I think, with this one. So it went dormant for a while and it looked like crap. So I just shoved the pot over to the side. It didn't need a lot of light, didn't need a lot of water. The soil was dry. And then I got an idea. This is Buddha, Buddha and his belly. Yep. Uh, right up close, what I did was I chopped his little head off. I did. Yep, right there. Snip. Because what was happening was it was getting thinner and thinner. And uh, I thought, well, I don't want the plant to come back to life on a thin top trunk. So I chopped it down and this is what happened. Let me get you down here so you can get a nice up close look. He put out one, two, two growing tips instead of one. Yeah, that's absolutely beautiful. And I do believe if I turn him, he might be wanting to put out a third one right here. Yeah, he not only put out growing tips and put out beautiful new leaves, each one of these put out a flower. Yeah, a flower cluster. The flowers haven't bloomed all the way out yet. So I'm going to have all kinds of beautiful orange flowers coming out of this thing. Yep, Buddha's back in business. Yes, he is. And there's another one. I'm just going to carry you over there instead of just putting the camera back on the tripod. I want to show you this. I have no idea what this is. This was sent to me by a viewer and it came in the mail in winter and it was uh, 
it was it was in, in horrible condition. You can see what the leaves look like. These aren't dirty. This is just some kind of damage to the leaves. It had one, two, three, four leaves on it and a little stem here. I planted it in the soil and it stayed there, stayed there, stayed there. It did nothing for the longest time. And I thought, well, this is no fun. And then one day it grew this leaf. This is all new leaf. And it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And I got kind of scared and I thought, well, when's it going to stop? Well, it stopped. And then it put out leaves. So there's leaves on the leaves. And I think they're going to get big too. So I might have to prop that thing up, huh? nail it to the wall or something. I have no idea what's going on with this plant. <laughs> and I don't know what the plant is because uh, I, I lost the label. And then just recently, a week or so ago, look at this. It put out a round stem. And I don't know what that's all about. It's not one of the leaves. So is that a flower stalk? I have no idea. Strange things going on in the garden of Vu. Oh, and let me back you up so that I can start the last part of this program. You sit to the side. I'll get to you later. This one needs a little bit of water. Buddha's always thirsty. I don't know where he puts it. I think he puts it in his gut. Yep, my little pruners here aren't going to do the job. Yep, this is a drastic thing that I'm going to do, but I have every confidence. Uh, I actually got confidence from a few viewers who have grown this before, and they encouraged me to go ahead and give it a try. Like I said, I'm scaling everything back. What happened is this. I go like this all oh, grand and everything. This big thing. This is a mango uh, grown. No, 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 no. It's papaya. Yeah, it's papaya. I keep calling it a mango and I don't know why. It's a papaya grown from a seed sent by one of you. Yeah, somebody sent me a, a, a papaya seed and I, I even have the tag still. Uh, and the tag is, is fading away. I started this on September 11th, 2015. This thing is like, it, it's old. <laughs> and it's grown up towards the light. It was really fun to, to have. Problem is now, this room isn't very tall and it's already hit the lights. It has nowhere to go. So it's gonna start looking a little bit, of, a little bit funky. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a ray on it is what we're gonna do. Now, I want to show you what I'm going to do and why I'm going to do it. And then I'm just going to do it. Okay. Come on over here. <laughs> Stand by me. Hold my hand. Give me a little bit of encouragement and let's get this done. Shall we? I have enjoyed this for so many years. It's amazing how much enjoyment you can get from just one plant watching it grow. And look, the flowers right here. Yep. I've been smelling the flowers for years. It's still growing. It's putting up new growth all over the place, new flowers all over the place. There is nothing wrong with this plant. Everything is right about it, even the growth, but it is growing a little bit too tall. So now what I want to do is buy some time and also see if I can grow multiple shoots out of this. Now along the stem, if you shove your nose right in there, you'll see little green nubs. See? They're all over the stem. And from what I've been told, those, any one of those, any many, any number of those will grow new plants if you cut the plant back. And it goes all the way down to the bottom. These little tiny nubs. So what I want to do is I want to give this a nice sturdy stalk, but I want to make it smaller so that it won't be quite so t uh, close to the ceiling and I'll get a little bit more room for other plants because this is shading the other plants. Now my only question now is where I want to uh, cut this. I can cut it at the top, way up at the top, and then it'll put out new shoots. But then again, I'm not going to have that much time until it hits the light again. So my thought was, why don't I just go farther down? Remember I cut the banana plant and it came back time after time after time. Now we have some new shoots right down there. And I'm thinking, what if I cut it like right here? That gives me 18 inches or so of stem trunk down there, a nice sturdy one. And hopefully a couple of these will come out and start growing. And this will give me many years worth of time before it hits the ceiling and it'll give the other plants some time to get some sun for themselves. That way they're going to all share in the lights. All right. Are you ready? Okay. I have no idea where this thing is going to fall. I better cut it with one hand and hold it with the other. Oops. Okay. And there we go. 
Whoa, look at the light. Mm, smells like a tree. It smell, I, I, I know that sounds ridiculous. Uh, of course it's a tree, it's, it's a papaya tree, but I lived in a forest in Minnesota and I cut down a lot of trees. It just smells like a regular tree to me. Kind of cute. I know, <laughs> it's kind of strange, <laughs> kind of scary, <laughs> kind of tropical. Walk around with this thing, keeping myself in the shade. But yeah, it, it is gonna give me plenty of time uh, to figure out what to do with that. I might put it in a bigger pot too. Give it a better root system with that new soil because now that it doesn't have the leaves, it's not going to go into shock as easily. And uh, so what I could do is in a couple weeks, if it doesn't do too awful much, I can shake off the soil and get a little bit of that soil off, put it in a slightly bigger pot like these green pots and give it some compost. And uh, we might see some, some crazy changes in that plant as it grows. Anyway, I think I'm pretty much done. I think I've made a mess of things for today. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and in the future, I got a couple things up here that are not quite ordinary for having in, a, in, in an indoor growing situation. I'll bring those to your attention and show you what's going on with those. They're act actually, one of them is very delicious. One of them will mess you up. And I'm not going to tell you what they are. You're just going to have to join me in the Voodoo Garden next time. But until now, I have to chop these things up and give them back to the compost pile so the compost pile can give back to us. Thank you for joining me for this uh, Raid the Butcher episode. <laughs> I had fun and I hope you did too. If you have any questions, comments, po uh, post them in the comment section below. If you got any kind of uh, uh, angry thoughts about this, please don't post them in the comment section below. I feel a little bit weird as it is. But anyway, this is Ray and his friends in the Voodoo Garden. Until next time, we're out of here. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. You'll feel better when you're in the compost pile. <laughs>